Anyway, I've got some good news and I've got some bad news. The bad news is we're all going to die. The good news is Jesus and Mary paved the way through death into heaven. Both of their bodies and their souls are in heaven right now. And that is what's going to happen to us. Both our bodies are going to be reunited with our souls once we join eternal life. And we celebrate that knowledge and we celebrate that belief in the assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary. That's why I found this cool white vestment. And that's why we're celebrating tonight, which will lead in tomorrow. Pope Pius XII in 1950 came out with a document that officially said, For the glory of Almighty God, who poured his special affection upon the Virgin Mary for the honor of his Son, we pronounce, declare, and define it to be a revealed dogma that the Immaculate Mother of God, ever Virgin Mary, having completed the course of earthly life, was assumed body and soul into heavenly glory. We celebrate that Jesus and Mary paved the way through death and sin and so made our eternal home in heaven, body and soul. And with that, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred. I'd like to set the record straight on two things. And I haven't heard any of you say this. I'm not yelling at anyone. Catholics don't worship Mary. I'm sure you might have heard that critique before. We honor and revere her. The second thing is, this is listed as a day of obligation. You are obligated to come to Mass. It is your obligation to be here, sitting in those pews and listening to me. No, not really. That's an unfortunate translation that I wish would, um, I don't know, I'm not going to be mad at Mother Church, obviously, but the way that obligation is used also goes hand in hand with privilege. What if I told you, you are obligated to eat next week? I don't think you'd really say, well, of course I'm going to eat. I'm going to eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Of course, I have to to live. Much in the same way, Sunday is a day of obligation. That means, well, if you want to live, you have to eat, right? So, whenever I see that, and people are reminded, it's a holy day of obligation. That means it's just an extra reminder that you get to eat again. You get to have a little extra food, which is what we're doing at the table here. Okay, those are my two beefs. I'm done. I was really excited to see this gospel because of what Mary says in the second part. She says, My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. This beautiful poem that she recites is called the Magnificat. And this might be the, the Magnificat is also the little um, issue of uh, scripture that you can read throughout the year. The Magnificat is also the name of the prayer that myself and every priest, every deacon, and seminarians who are learning how to pray, we say this every single evening. There's a rotation of psalms called the Liturgy of the Hours, and part of it is psalms and gospel passages, and we say these words of Mary every single evening with our evening prayer. And so what a joy it is to proclaim them. When I say them in the quiet of my room or with another priest, in my heart I get to say them out loud. And one of the translations of this title, it's called the Magnificat, because the way that proclaims is translated is magnified. So another way to translate it is, my soul magnifies the greatness of God. And if you think about it, Mary, as a human, and us, we join her in humanity, we are like magnifying glasses. Now, I don't know if your experience with magnifying glasses is maybe trying to read, get closer to the paper or the crossword puzzle, or maybe it's uh, burning little ants on the sidewalk. I won't say which one I did. But a magnifying glass takes all the rays of the sun, all the intense power that is showering down, and it concentrates it and shines it so it can be even more powerful, even more Strong and even more, it burns. It starts to burn things. So keep that away from the crossword puzzle. Be careful. So the power of the sun is magnified through this little glass and turned into something extraordinary. 
God can do the same, and he did do the same through Mary, as he says, my soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. The same way is why Mary is pictured on top of the moon. The moon goes hand in hand with Mary and God and their relationship. The sun is still getting at us even at night because the sun's rays bounce around the earth, bounce off the moon, and then onto us as we look up at the night sky. In the same way, Mary does not distract from God's glory. She merely reflects it and magnifies it and lights up the darkness. In the same way, we too, as humans, as children of God, can be little magnifying glasses. God is shining down and raining all his grace and glory upon us, and we get to make that an even more concentrated beam of power. The same way that Mary reflects all the glory of God onto us and keeps nothing for herself, the same way that the moon, when it's shining up in the bright sky, we say the moon is shining, but it's really the sun shining on the moon and reflecting back at us. So as we go forward, and you've completed your obligation, so you're all clear. As we go forward into this holy day of celebrating the assumption of Mary being brought up into heaven, let's ask ourselves, what ways can I magnify God's glory? What ways can I reflect God's light into the world, just as the moon does? And then we can find, once we do that, spend our life doing that, we can finally join her, body and soul, with Jesus in heaven forever. Amen.